had something that really fuels your passion and that thing gets lost this show is for you the show is painful goodbyes just to help us in that topic is tando and he's with us here people would love to know who we are talking about and talking to awesome uh tando is my name and i'm so excited to be here and I hope to share my story with everyone and hopefully someone will be inspired. Yeah, so maybe just a bit about myself. Mm -hmm. I am um, I'm a husband to one lovely wife, uh, father, or, uh, father to two children. Mm -hmm. And um, I, love, I love people. I love uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. I love good food. And <laughs> I, I, I love singing as well. Um, yeah. Uh, pretty much, I think you could say Tando is someone who likes to connect with people, mm -hmm. who's, who likes to make a difference in other people's lives. And mm -hmm. really, that's what really keeps me going every single day. Yeah. Uh, maybe that, that explains uh, the middle name. That is it. You gave yourself Hatzman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually, interestingly, it's, it's actually my, f it, it, was, it was my first name oh. uh, at, at birth. So if you okay. were to go to the original birth entry okay. uh, at, the, at the place where they make the birth certificates, okay. you'll okay. find that originally my name is Hatzman and uh -huh. Tandolenkos is the second name. Okay. And yeah, so it actually, I, it, it was corrected recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So now it's Tandol. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's good to, to know about that. And now you spoke about your passion. Um, what are the things that fueled your passion? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I did mention that I, I do enjoy career guidance, for example, and that's one of the things that really, you know, it, it animates me, it inspires me. Um, and whenever I, I, I look at young people, the one thing that I really feel mm -hmm. close to my heart is to help them to achieve their fullest potential. Mm -hmm. And so I think from around 2006, when I was in college, I remember coming up with this idea that, you know what, I'd really, really, really like to be involved in career guidance, but I really never then got to that. And then uh, along the line, you know, as I would go to the rural areas, I would see this gap. You know, you know it would be nice to, to, to go to the rural areas and inspire young people. And, and you know, that was, that was something that really, really, uh, drove me mm -hmm. and I remember thinking okay so how do I do this mm -hmm. <laughs> how do I do this how do I get to the rural areas mm -hmm. how do I you know and then somewhere along the line something came that you know could really help me mm -hmm. to achieve my goal yeah mm -hmm. you want to talk about that yeah I, I remember interestingly uh, it was w when we were thinking about you know uh, a car mm -hmm. it, I went through a bit of a crisis and as a family decided no, we need to get a, a pickup truck okay. and when we got that pickup truck wow it okay. was you know it just helped me to you know further that passion and mm -hmm. I would find myself going to the rural areas you mm -hmm. know to, to do career guidance and yeah so mm -hmm. that was really that one thing that really you know mm -hmm. helped me get closer to, to my life. Yeah. That. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where you'll be able to pack your things, and yes. it will be a very beautiful thing. Yeah. Now, um, you spoke about your wife and your children, maybe just a bit on your children, mm -hmm. their names, who are they and how old they are. Yeah, sure. Uh, my wife, uh, more blessings, mm -hmm. lovely uh, young lady, uh, keeps me young. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Carol, mm -hmm. she's seven. Chad mm -hmm. is uh, turning, yeah, he's five. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's the four of us. We have someone coming mm -hmm. soon. So we'll share the name when they come. When they come. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for sharing your story. And thank you for sharing about the car that really drove your passion and made it possible for you to realize this. Please stay tuned. 
after the break, we'll hear more on this story. Welcome back to the second segment. This is the show, Painful Goodbyes. I am Skombuzo Due, and in the show with me is Tando Hatsman Gomo. I learned today that Hatsman was the original name. I used to think it's not the original name. Uh, now, um, there is the choice of the car that you had. Maybe we need to talk about that. Why that car specifically and not other cars for fueling this passion that you had? I mean, uh, the car itself, in terms of the choice, you know, um, it, it, maybe, maybe can, I, can I say it was by, by providence. Okay. Um, I remember we started looking for a car as a family, mm -hmm. and we didn't have enough money, and we posted, you know, we're looking for a car, we're looking for a car, and lo and behold, someone mm -hmm. uh, was interested in listening to our story okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and so that's how we ended up um, you know mm -hmm. uh, settling for that it was a Nissan Navara mm -hmm. XUK nice nice blue uh, backy it was um, a club cap mm -hmm. you know so yeah uh, it it was not definitely not love at first sight but it okay. was <laughs> but it was able to to do what it is that we wanted and it really you know plugged a, a couple of gaps mm -hmm. in the areas that we wanted to 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 you know to fill in in our family setup okay you know when it comes to traveling to the rural areas even mm -hmm. for family errands mm -hmm. it really made our lives much much easier mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. thank you very much thank you very much. you are Talking about the car in past tense mm -hmm. terms, mm -hmm. why why so? What happened? Yeah, on uh, you know in in vernacular they say there's a, a stupid day, you okay. know, uh, and you know there's out of the blue we we, we had an accident, um, it's an accident really. Um, if, if I may just take you through that, you know, mm -hmm. I was. In, in my my mother-in-law requested to use that the vehicle mm -hmm. um, for a graduation ceremony. ceremony. Uh, my uh, sister-in-law was graduating at uh, MSU, okay. and so she, you know, they requested, "Can we use your car?" And I said, "Sure, mm -hmm. um, can you use my car." Mm -hmm. My wife at that time was in South Africa; she had gone to visit, and she was expecting my our our last-born mm -hmm. Chad. And so I was alone at home. I didn't really need the car, mm -hmm. so I was like, "Okay, sure, you can, you can, use you can car. use the car." And mm -hmm. so gave the car, gave her the car in the morning, mm -hmm. and she went with the uh, my sister-in-law and I think two, two or three other relatives. Mm -hmm. And later in the evening, around after the graduation, around four thereabout, mm -hmm. three, four thereabout. She calls me and says, "Hey, your, the car is refusing to." I remember she said, "It's not the, the gears are not are not functioning." I'm like yeah. gears, but oh. I recently serviced the car. What's mm. what's happening? It's like ah no, they're they're not functioning. And so I I said to her, "Okay, no, that's fine. Um, can you just uh, leave the car there mm -hmm. in Guerra? I'm organizing transport for you to mm. drive to Bulawayo, Bulawayo. Mm. and then I will drive." and pick up the car with mm -hmm. the mechanic and so everything was set. Mm -hmm. um, around the time that I expected them to be in Bulawayo, mm. I get a call. No, I, we would like you to actually come and pick us up. <laughs> okay. So all the time I was in Bulawayo, I was minding my own business, yeah. thinking, ah, you know, I'm waiting for these guys to arrive. But mm. um, we left, we had to go and pick them up. I went with my brother-in-law mm. uh, in a, in a I think it's a two-ton, uh, those two-ton trucks. trucks yeah. And so we went. Um, and when we got to Gueru, uh, we decided, oh, why don't we just tow 
tow my car back mm -hmm. to Bulawayo. Okay. So I was in my in my baki with mm -hmm. other people and uh, uh, other yeah. people were in the in the in the in the other in the in the other truck. Mm -hmm. And I remember we I was feeling so sleepy. Mm -hmm. In fact, what I remember most about that day, that trip in particular, was the whole way from Bulawayo to Kweru, I kept falling in and out of sleep. Mm. And then when we're now coming back, um, I could only drive up to Shangani. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I cannot do this anymore. Oh. Mm. I'm feeling sleepy, mm. super sleepy. And I kept on, even when, as we're now coming, I kept on falling asleep, mm. waking up, falling asleep. And the last thing that I remember, I remember two last things. Mm. I remember us passing, there was an accident just before Ntabazinduna, and I remember that one person died at that accident. I remember us passing that accident. Mm. And I remember seeing the, 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 the rescue, the fire uh, uh, rescue team. On your way to where? We, no, we're coming we're back coming to Blawa. I remember seeing those, mm. the, those people attending to the scene. Mm. And I remember seeing a sign that said, uh, Bulawa, I think it was Bulawa 40Ks or Bulawa, I can't, yeah. But I remember that sign mm. specifically. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying, oh, wow. Mm. We are almost home. Mm. And the next thing I remember is that it was like a dream. Mm. I just felt commotion. The car was in distress. I could feel like, mm. you know, there was a lot of banging and yeah, things were just not in order. I, mm. But we're still moving, but I could feel that something was not right. right. Mm. But uh, as I would then realize after, afterwards, what had actually happened was the car was, was spinning, mm. it was rolling. I'm not sure how many times it rolled and then it set on its, uh, it landed on its feet, or on its wheels rather. Mm. Yeah. Quite a, a painful thing it was. And now you woke up, there's this, there's this kind of waking up from the dream mm -hmm. and you are seeing the car is, it's just what it is. Mm. Uh, tell me about the emotions that you went through. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was you know, like every accident. No one expects an accident. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, what I remember is that before, I, before we attended to the car, I remember that mm -hmm. we had to check if other people were, you know, were okay, you know. And fortunately, everyone was alive, although mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of bruises and, and cuts. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for, I, I came out alive mm. and a part of me was angry that how did we get into this kind of a situation mm -hmm. um, it's at the same time so I'm, I'm having these mixed feelings I'm excited that I'm alive uh, but I'm also <laughs> the angry, angry that, that I'm sad I'm angry mm -hmm. that this is such an unfortunate situation mm -hmm. and you then start to think you know oh okay so now we're in this situation mm -hmm. What does it mean going forward, you know? Mm. And it's, it's never easy to, to come out of an accident. It's mm. never, mm. yeah. And the other car that was tow, towing you and there's this car, what, what was the condition of the other car that you used? It, so what happened was there was um, that at the tow bar. Mm -hmm. The tow bar actually broke the the that the you know the loading bed of the mm. of that two ton truck so it so that truck was that side there and it had separated the loading bed had separated from it it had overturned it was yeah so two <laughs> it was trucks terrible. overturned yeah it was really terrible, terrible. yeah mm -hmm. it was a terrible situation now this is a very it's you're coming from a very joyous event and now you are stuck in a very sad event. There is this kind of a situation where you shift from one spectrum to the other. And what did that do to you? I mean, uh, also maybe some background as well. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, we had actually, that, the week of that accident was actually the anniversary of my father's uh, Death, yeah. in a car accident. In a car accident. So you can imagine, um, I was just thinking, wow, you know, I've, I'm in a car accident mm -hmm. on the same week mm -hmm. that my dad was involved in a car accident 12 months prior. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And, you know, you're thinking, okay, so what's, what's really going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, and my relatives, these are my in-laws, mm -hmm. I was helping them. Now we're in this kind of an accident. Mm -hmm. You really wonder what's really going on? Is there something sinister yeah. here? What's really happening? Mm -hmm. Certainly people were happy. Certainly people are, are sad. Mm -hmm. I was at home. Uh, minding my own business, just waiting. I remember I was preparing for the Sabbath, you know, and I I just eaten my meal, and yeah. and suddenly I had to rush to Gweru, and then suddenly I'm in this kind of a situation. Really, it it was a lot of things kept uh, went through my mind, you know. Yeah. Now speaking about, you know, you you were, it sounds like you were triggered by the loss. I mean, this loss, this mm -hmm. accident, the loss of a car mm -hmm. became more painful because of the anniversary that was in that week. Uh, maybe just take us through that and uh, the loss and the connection between the two. Yeah, I mean, if, if you think about our, you know, Africans, mm -hmm. uh, Africans hold a lot of beliefs, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and um, you, you, and certainly when you, when, when you find yourself facing something like that, mm -hmm. like I'm saying, my dad mm -hmm. died that very week, mm -hmm. the previous year, and now mm -hmm. I'm in such an accident, you'll be thinking, okay, so yeah. is, there, what, is there a connection, connection. here? Mm -hmm. And so definitely it was quite unsettling mm -hmm. because it made me step back and wonder, okay, is there something here? Mm -hmm. that I should be worried about, you know. Um, so the accident was a reminder, of, you know, a really uh, a reminder about the loss of my dad, you know. I, I remember even up to, up to that time, it's something that would keep on coming back to me, you know, and mm -hmm. I would always ask myself, but, you know, how, how did this man die in, in the car accident in such a manner. Mm -hmm. And for me to find myself now uh, in, in such a situation, mm -hmm. it was quite unsettling. Mm -hmm. um, it was really, really quite unsettling. But I think uh, the one thing that really kept me focused mm -hmm. and resolute was, you know what, no, God is there. Mm -hmm. This thing happened for a purpose. I may not understand the purpose, purpose. Mm -hmm. but I was, I was really grateful that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, I was alive to tell the tale, to tell the tale, yeah. Are there any similarities, and if they are there, what could they be between the two accidents? Um, and what do they mean to you? Um, f for me, uh, I, I, well, the, I can, can't really say there were any similarities, mm -hmm. but in terms of what they mean mm -hmm. to me, um, as a Christian, mm -hmm. for example, is they help me to to reflect on the question of why, okay. why, why, um, why me, mm -hmm. uh, why at that particular time, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and and as someone who always struggles to answer questions, mm -hmm. those are some of the questions that uh, that's one question. The question of that accident is one that I. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I've, I've just said, you know what, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to, we're, all, we're going to understand it mm -hmm. sometime, but you mm -hmm. know what, definitely it's one question that I want to, to sit down, when you get to heaven, sit down with, with Jesus and say, but man, um, why, mm -hmm. why at that particular time, time. did mm -hmm. you have, did I have to go through this, mm -hmm. or my dad, why did they have to go through this? And so it, for me, it's a, it's a point of reflection in that, in that, in that kind of um, direction. Mm. Thank you very much for your honesty and your candidness in this. There you have it, friends. Sometimes certain losses trigger the losses of those, those losses that we may not have grieved necessarily. Please stay tuned as we get into the third and final segment.
Welcome back to the show, Painful Goodbyes. So sometimes when days are dark, friends are very few. I don't know when you lost your car, maybe you can talk about your friends and the support system that you had during that time. Wow, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that uh, the first thing that happened mm -hmm. is like, as soon as I got out of my car, mm -hmm. um, I took my phone and I tried to call, I remember I tried to call my friend. Actually, I thought about who was the nearest person mm -hmm. to where I was and two names came by. There was Kolwani mm -hmm. uh, and then there was Roy. I mm -hmm. tried Kolwani, Kolwani didn't pick up his phone. Mm -hmm. And then I tried Roy. And what I remember about Roy mm -hmm. is that for some reason on that particular day mm -hmm. or morning, his phone was on. Because I remember he was saying, Tando, I, I never keep my phone uh, um, you know, on during the night. But mm -hmm. on that day, his phone was on and he was the first person to respond. He came and I just explained to him because I was in so much pain. Mm -hmm. And I just told him what was happening. And then he was the one who then assisted with calling the ambulance and, and, and all the things. Mm -hmm. And then I remember when I had gotten to the hospital, my, my sister-in-law was very supportive. I was in, a, in one hospital where I was really uncomfortable and mm -hmm. she uh, assisted me to be transferred to another hospital. Mm -hmm. And then when I was at the other hospital, the men from church, they came and it was, it was amazing. The, the, the mm. messages of consolation mm. were coming. Um, some of them I didn't like. <laughs> 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 I didn't like. I, I remember, you know, when, when you lose, when you're in a car accident, people yeah. will say, you know, it's, it's good that you're alive. Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's great that I'm alive. But you understand that I actually lost a car. Mm. <laughs> you know, I was really angry. Mm. I was angry mm -hmm. um, as, as I, cause I really felt the devil had actually taken something from, from you, you know, and he didn't need to take it. Mm. So yes, the, the support was, was phenomenal okay. from, from the church friends in particular. I remember they, they came to visit. I was in the hospital for uh, two or three days, I think. Mm. It was really amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> you spoke about the comments and that, that you, at least you are alive. So this, this brought a question to my mind. Mm. When you lost that car, what did you lose? I lost my legs. Um, I, I lost my ability to get things done. You know, mm. I lost my ability to, to, to get things done mm -hmm. as quickly as I want them to be done. Mm -hmm. um, um, so essentially I could no longer be able to, I remember we were in business, mm -hmm. so we had a family business, it meant that we could no longer mm -hmm. uh, be as efficient in business, mm -hmm. uh, it meant that I could no longer support my various family members in the manner that I could support them, mm -hmm. I, I could no longer, even at church, my contribution at church was now mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a, a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. I started to worry about, okay, so I worship at this church that is in town and I don't mm -hmm. stay in town. Now we have to worry about transport to church. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember no one ever offered me transport to church. <laughs> <laughs> no one was there yeah. when, you know, yeah. after that, no one was there to call and say, but guys, we know that you you're in an accident, mm -hmm. you no longer have a car, can we come and pick you up and mm -hmm. go to church with you? No one was there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so we lost, we lost a lot. Mm -hmm. we, no one was there now to, to pick us up when we need to go for shopping mm -hmm. or we need to go to the rural areas. Those are the things that we lost mm -hmm. as a family and as a person. Remember I talked about the career guidance projects, mm -hmm. that, those came to a standstill yes, mm -hmm. because now my legs pretty much were cut, mm -hmm. you know, that is, that is what but I lost. lost yes. So when someone would say, wow, mm -hmm. um, at least you are alive. Yeah. Yes, at least I'm alive, <laughs> but don't have my legs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so with, with that, and there are, there are other comments maybe that came besides at least you are alive, that may have injured you somehow. What would be, what are those comments? Well, I, I can't really point to specifics, but I can, I can, you know, think about things like God, God, God gives 
Yeah, and God takes. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't worry, it will come. Things will come. It will be okay. You know. Um, I th I think for me, mm -hmm. the the test in all this was because I'm a. I think I'm a very rational person, and mm -hmm. I'm not a theologian, but I've read the Bible very well, mm -hmm. and so I really wanted a theologically correct explanation <laughs> okay. to what has just what happened, happened. Mm -hmm. you know. And so I guess I got to identify a bit with, mm -hmm. with Job, just a bit. You know, mm -hmm. Job had much, much more than I did, but mm -hmm. got to identify a bit with that. Mm -hmm. And it really then helped me to also reflect perhaps mm -hmm. on, on my, maybe my attachment mm -hmm. to that vehicle okay. to say maybe, you know, it may be, Maybe I loved the thing too much. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are instances where people revise their attachment. Mm -hmm. How was it so in your case? And if so, um, maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, I mean, truth be told, it, mm -hmm. it, was, it, has, it has been difficult to, to let go of, of that, that the, the idea of that vehicle. Mm -hmm. It has been very difficult. Mm -hmm because we did try to rebuild it, it's still somewhere being rebuilt. Um, but it, it really also helps me to ask myself, are there things maybe that I, that I am holding on to too much? Uh, maybe I should just let go and let God, you know, those are the kinds of things that come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's really helped me to, to reflect on, on on a lot of things. And, uh, and also another point of reflection has been also to, to the attachment that you have with friends and family mm -hmm. to think that maybe they might come through for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that it's, it's not necessarily the case just because you come through for other people. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the case that they may come, for, f come through for you. But I mean, these are not sour grapes, but mm -hmm. this is just uh, some of the things that um, you know, I've come to learn to deal with, yeah. Mm. What would be your final words to anyone that has lost maybe a car, a house, or whatever? Take it in your stride. Um, we don't know what is ahead, so just take it in your stride, um, rise up, you know. Um, if you've got family to help you through it, all the best. If you, if, if you don't have, mm -hmm. um, I think God, 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 understands God is going to help you through and God is always going to provide those miracles for you and yeah if there was time I'll tell you about one miracle that mm -hmm. is always available for us but indeed yeah um, take it in your stride. Thank you very much Tando Hartsman Gomo for sharing your story for me Tando and the crew behind the scenes. It's a wrap. <laughs>